Have you ever received an SEO advice, implemented it on your website to see it not work at all, or even worse, negatively affect your website? Trust me, you're not the only one. The web is flooded with bad SEO advice. So I've collected the nine most common SEO mistakes you want to avoid at all costs. And the first one is keyword stuffing. You've probably been told that you just need to mention a keyword hundreds to thousands of times on a web page, and then Google knows what that page is about, and then it's optimized. But you couldn't be more wrong. You don't want to use it that much because Google sees it as spam, and it doesn't bring any value if you just mention the keyword over and over again, because the reader will read it and not get anything helpful from it. So what you want to do instead is that you want to include your keyword in your URL, your title, your meta description, your H1, and your intro. And then you can mention it throughout the content, but don't use it as a factor that you want a high keyword density. So you want to mention it a lot of times. Don't do that. Just keep it simple and focus more on writing helpful content. And SEO mistake number two is to completely ignore on-page SEO. This is completely opposite where you don't mention your keyword at all. You write a long URL that makes no sense. Your title is something different and your H1 is even something third. You want to keep these aligned. You want to use the same keyword as the URL. You want to use the keyword in your title, your H1 and your intro. And then you want to make sure that your headings are descriptive. Don't keyword stuff the headings, but just make them descriptive. So it makes sense as soon as I've read your heading, then I know what I'm about to read in the section of content. So it's super important to write helpful content and give the answer right away in the intro so people, they don't have to look for it. This is also part of focusing on on-page SEO. And then add both external and internal links that provide even more value if people want to continue to read on a specific subject. Common SEO mistake number three is ignoring mobile completely. This is super critical because Google is indexing mobile first and people are just searching more and more on mobile rather than desktop. That's just a fact. And you can even go to your Google Analytics and check how many are visiting your website from a mobile compared to desktop. You might be in an industry where it's opposite, but nine out of 10 times mobile is the majority. And that's why you want to focus on that to create a good user experience. Because as it also came out in the antitrust trial from Google last year, user experience is a ranking factor. So you want to create a good user experience on mobile, ensure that there's not too much scroll when you want to get to the content, make some engaging elements, make sure the font size is easy to read, and overall it's just easy to navigate your website from the mobile. A smart little trick you can do is to, instead of focusing on desktop first and mobile secondary, then swap those. So whenever you write your content, then think how will this look on mobile? You want to avoid the block of text, of course, but this mindset change really helps you in creating helpful content for mobile. And once it's helpful on mobile, often it's also helpful on desktop as well. SEO mistake number four is ignoring page speed. This one is super important as well. I don't know about you, but when I visit a website and if it takes more than two seconds to load, I'm off and I'm on to the next website. I don't want to waste my time. And there might even be people whose patient is even worse. So it's super important you have a fast loading website. You don't need to score 100 out of 100 on the Google PageSpeed report, but ensure that you have fixed all the issues that the Google PageSpeed is telling you to, if possible, and that your website is just loading fast and it's a good user experience, because if it doesn't load fast, you will simply start losing visitors. And once you lose visitors, you will also lose rankings as well. That's why it's super important. Mistake number five is ignoring content quality. This is super important. You simply can't write thin content anymore and rank on Google. Because if people want thin content, they will go to AI. They'll go and ask ChatGPT for their answer that they're looking for. So that's why you need to bring something extra. You need to bring value to the reader, something they can't get from an AI. This can be personal experience or something that you have seen on other websites and you have improved it. So ensure that you're covering all the topics that your competitors are covering and then also add something extra, your own personal experience. That's why you can stand out and make a better piece of content. It's so important because if you just write thin content, it'll be comparable to AI and it simply won't rank anymore. Mistake number six is not improving based on data. You get so much free data from both Google Analytics and Google Search Console where you can improve your website. For example, with Google Analytics, you can see how long does people spend on your website? What do they click on more or less if you track that? and so on. So you can basically see their experience on your website. 
And if you start to see some patterns throughout your Google Analytics, where you can see that people click towards this article, but they only stay one to three seconds, that's super low and you want to improve that as well. But at the same time, it's also good if they say only 10 to 20 seconds, because then they might have got the answer they were looking for and simply just moved on. Another thing is Google Search Console. Here you can use it as well to improve your content. So if you see that you have a CTR below 3%, for example, you want to improve the title and the meta description. So simply just Google your keyword that you're targeting for the specific content piece that is right now below 3% as a CTR and then see what are your competitors writing in the title because apparently that's working right now and you want to lean up against that but in your own version of course and of course still use the keyword in the title. Mistake number seven is ignoring technical SEO and I understand that this one can be difficult but it doesn't have to be. One thing you can do is to install Rank Math if you're using WordPress and here you can use all the schema parts. That's one part of technical SEO. Another thing you should do is to sign up for Ahrefs, the free version, and then add your website to the site audit. And then Ahrefs will tell you all the issues there are on your website. And then you simply have to go and fix them. So you get a higher score on Ahrefs, which means that you have less technical issues. And that's how easy technical SEO can be. Ahrefs even tells you how to fix the different issues. It's super easy. Mistake number eight is ignoring link building. Of course, you need to build links internally where you link between your content pieces, but you also need to do it externally. You need backlinks for your content. Even though Google says that backlinks are not important anymore, the search results are just showing completely different than what Google is actually saying. So you need to take it with a grain of salt when Google are telling you these things. So what you can do is that either when you write great content, you will automatically earn backlinks. But if you build tools as well, you can use ChatGPT to help you with the code. But you can build small tools and these tools, if they're helpful, will also earn backlinks automatically over time. And the last thing you can do is to sign up for Featured.com, Harrow and similar services. Here you get an email with requests and you simply just have to answer these requests. And if the website that requested your quote finds it helpful, they will link back to your website often and then you got a backlink. So there is a free way of doing it. There's also a paid way of doing it where you can run some PR campaigns with companies like Search Intelligence but this is super pricey, so it depends on your budget what way you should go. And mistake number nine is giving up too quickly. SEO takes time, it still takes time today. Even though you might see some AI websites just take off and just get thousands of clicks, if you check them a couple of months later, you will see that they're back to square one and they simply can't recover because they spam Google. So have patience, be consistent, write helpful content, and don't be surprised if it takes up to eight months before your website starts to take off. You just need to be consistent and stay in your lane and focus on your industry and write great content. Build links, focus on technical SEO and all the elements we've been talking about in this video. And if you've built your website on top of WordPress, which I really recommend that you do, then I've made a step-by-step -step guide on how you make the perfect SEO setup right up here. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.